Ooh. <laughs> so we're just waiting for Cindy. So I thought I'd record while we while we're waiting for Cindy so she could see what the heck's going on. She probably won't have time to watch this video until after Pat's party on Saturday, but we'll at oh, least yeah. have um uh you know, she can see what's what's going on. I don't want her to feel like she's missed because of course we want her here. But how great to see you. Boy, my gosh, Mary and Deirdre. Yeah. I mean <laughs> Wow, it's been forever since we've seen you. It's like proper room. I see Mary. And, <laughs> and and uh Cindy's dying to tell you something, Mary. And I, I'm not gonna tell you. So oh. she's like, I keep wanting to tell Mary, but you know, we haven't met. And when I, you know, so you'll just have to wait. Yay. So she's I've been just been crazy cool. busy. I've been yeah. really, really busy. And then we were traveling last weekend, so. Yeah, let's hear where everybody's yeah. been before we start on our genealogy stuff. So Mary, you start, you've been a lot, way the longest. Yeah, so we went down to Georgia last week and- uh, Ooh, the devil went down Trevor. to Georgia. And, for, and we did. I don't remember the words. We so. did, and we bought mushrooms and kombucha. And <laughs> oh, we I did a mop of kombucha and more like mushrooms. And we we're talking about like chanterelles. Um, I got a really good lion's mane tincture, which is really good for dementia. So, uh, so yeah. And other than that, just been really busy watching bike racing because the Tour de France just ended and the Olympics are starting. So that's like, literally, I've been spending the past three weeks, like four or five hours of my day, just walk, watching bike racing. So it's <laughs> been very crazy. So yeah. So yeah, that's. There do you have a question or a statement? Question. Yeah. So where did you buy mushrooms in Georgia? Like oh no, we got them. Um, Sean's um, brother, <laughs> his, his wife, they forage for them, like literally in their backyard. Oh, they're finding like chanterelles, lion's mane. Yeah, like you see how much chanterelles cost. Yeah, in a store. Oh. Yeah, like they're expensive. Cool. You can get chanterelles. So, did you go down to Georgia to see family or was it? Yeah, like we just went down to see um, his brother and his kids and his wife and just hang out. And yeah. Now, have you guys gotten hit by the tail ends of those tropical storms? Um, that one week we did. And that's why I didn't come because yeah. something got changed to the afternoon because we had, it was horrific. It was really bad. But um, luckily, we got through unscathed, and we've just been getting a lot of rain. Yeah, so it's just really hot, humid, a lot of rain. Boy, we could use it here. Rain. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I heard. I heard of that before. It, it's a. It's yeah. a distant memory. <laughs> Concept. Man. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of it. So we actually drove home in it, and it was pretty bad. Huh. So yeah. So I hate driving in the rain. So, but uh, yeah. So and it takes like eight, nine hours. Well, about eight hours to get down there from where we're at. Yeah. Really? It's, yeah, it takes some time to get down there. Yeah. Cause I wouldn't pitch all the way down near they're they're almost down near the Florida line. Oh, they're at the they're other down end. Like Fort Benning. Oh. So yeah, it's it's a haul. <laughs> to get and then longer when you're raining and you're trying to drive back in it. Yeah, it was yeah. So are but, you a bicyclist that you're so um, in so I really got, I actually, I really got into, um, I've been a bicyclist all my life, like mountain biking, but I really got into the Tour de France last year during the pandemic. Um, so plus I just started getting back in shape and started just doing, um, getting back in shape on an exercise bike. So, which has been like really awesome. And my husband just got a bike new bike last week we've been saving up for it and I'm going up to Pennsylvania to get my sister's bike because I was going to buy another bike and she's like no 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 she's like come up and get mine she got a new one so great I'm getting this nice hybrid bike and guess wow. we're gonna start riding for real yeah so nice I mean you don't I've been through like a lot of like hip surgeries and shoulder surgeries and so I've been like down for a while so this is like a nice like comeback yeah for me that's good it's like it's been like I, I hate to say that this pandemic hasn't been a blessing but it has been for me in that yeah. that way 
yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's some good sides of this. I mean, one of them is that we're able to do this Zoom thing. We would never have done this if we hadn't had the pandemic. There's a lot of benefits. Uh, uh, True. I play trivia on Thursday nights. And last week, one of the people who plays is in North, North Carolina. And oh. they did a category because I let them do a category. Everybody can volunteer to do a category. And it was Tour de France. That's oh. last week. And it was yeah. really interesting. They're really into it. I mean, she's like, you know, watching it, her and her husband. Yeah, we get up at really like six o'clock in the morning. Like we're getting up no at six o'clock in the morning to watch it and not realizing that our trip was during the end of the Tour de France because the last day is like huge. So I'm like, I hope you don't mind. We're going to watch the Tour de France. So <laughs> we just like took over their living room for like three hours. <laughs> Everybody yeah. be quiet around me. Yeah. Keep watching this. Back off. I hope it's more exciting. Well, they like bicycling off. too, not as much as we do, but yeah, we're like very, we follow all the races all year long now. We're into the oh, Olympics. Wow. We're going to start cycling. Like we want to go over to Europe and cycle. Like it's oh, like that big. Yeah. So we like it. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good hobby. Well, it is a good yeah. hobby. It's a nice, healthy hobby. Well, yeah. Can we put, we put up the motorcycles because before that we were doing a lot of motorcycling. So we did that for three, four years and went to like motorcycle rallies and all that. And it's just, it's old really quick. You know, it's the same old, same old. And this is a little bit better. Well, I, yeah. sold, I sold yeah. my bike in, when I turned 50. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, well, I had to sell it because of my shoulder. I, I went through like three more surgeries. Mm. So, yeah. So, and I, you know, I'd love to be able to get another motorcycle again, but I'd rather have a bicycle. And they cost sometimes more than a motorcycle. Tamberly, have you seen uh, Elba's bicycle? It rides around the neighborhood? Huh? Have you seen Elba, the woman who lives in our neighborhood, Elba? She lives yeah. at the end of the block. She has a new bicycle. And I tried it out. That freaking thing is insane. I would kill myself on it. It's it's electric. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Bike. They're frightening. Oh my yeah. God! You you put your you put your butt on it and you put your foot on it to push the pedal and you're gone. You're yeah. Like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Zero yeah. to like twenty in a second or two. It feels like it's oh, oh my God. I forget you know, how it was. I'm gonna broke their back on one of them. Ew. Like it was, it was a celebrity or something. They broke their back on an e-bike. Yeah, they. they That's what they're called e-bikes. Yeah. yeah. Do you have one of those? Is that what you got? No. no. Well, the driver's license I have now is the first one I've had since I was 15 and a half that does not have a motorcycle authorization. Oh, fun. They, when I got my real ID, they left it off for some reason, and I was going to fight it, but I thought, you know, I haven't owned a motorcycle since yeah. I was 21 and probably it wouldn't be good to, you know, say I have a license. I can ride one after that many years. Yeah. You don't want that yeah. temptation. I let mine fall off my license too. It was like, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm happy. Like, oh, like, Hi, yeah. Katie. Mm -hmm. Very good. Dare G. So what have you been up to? Where, have you been out riding your motorcycle? <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm the only one that Never had a motorcycle designation on not her. too late. <laughs> I guess not. I'm pretty sure my I got little, a leather jacket sitting here waiting for you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my little four-year-old granddaughter will be one with it on her license because she loves watching those mo uh the dirt bikes and oh yeah, yeah. And mom have dirt bikes, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um well, I said that I, I mean, you two knew that I went to Florida and oh my gosh, you know, I just don't really recommend flying right now. You know, I had two flights canceled and had to stay in two hotels, you know, <laughs> because I was at the airport. Oh, and masked the whole time. Oh yeah. And mass. And then last week, um, my daughter and son-in-law and six-year-old granddaughter came from Sparks, Reno, about it. And um, so my daughter and her husband went to Cannon Beach, Oregon for four nights, five days, and we babysat. And oh my gosh, it's a lot. I saw, Susan, that you babysat 
a little one oh, the other day oh, on Facebook. But five um, months old, easy to, easy to take care of. Here's your pacifier, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the six year old, she did three days of swim lessons. We went to the beach. We she was totally into the ranch with the sheep and the barn cats and. We were down there for hours. Um, yeah. So uh, there was like no way I could do any genealogy there. Yeah. Well, you're you're ready to come back now. You're you're done and the, your vacation's over and you're I do have some little things to share though, but okay, good. We'll get to that. So did you in Florida, anything else that you noticed while you were there? Non-genealogy the like uh, it's the second time I've been to Florida. Granted, it's which both part? times I've been in June, which I realize is like the worst time to go. But where were you at? Um, uh, Merritt Island, which is like 40 minutes from the Orlando airport. Um, yeah. You didn't go to Disney World? Oh, God. <laughs> no, that was the last time I went. And no, I mean, <laughs> no, I no, I was visiting a friend, um, so college sorority sisters. We went, she, she's got a chronic, uh, a terminal disease. And mm. so it was kind of a bittersweet thing. I mean, we had fun and, you know, she still can speak pretty good. It's kind of like ELS, well. but uh, multiple system atrophy. So mm. yeah, but, but no, we never left her house. Yeah. And I was all ready to go in her fabulous swimming pool, except that I took a picture of three others that were like ready, sitting on the edge, ready to go in. And, and they're like, something's biting me. Oh my gosh. They had bites. Terrible. They had to get prescription cream. It oh, was awful. What from? No seams. Do you have no seams in New North Carolina? Yeah. What are they uh, I don't know what they are. Little tiny. Oh, no tiny. CMs? Oh, yeah. You can't see them. I mean, oh, man. I don't know what the, the scientific we term is that? for no CMs, but oh, a nasty bite. Itches yeah. like crazy. Welts. Uh, the, the bumps last for weeks. Really awful. Oh, man. And you know, you think about these vacations and you think, oh, this is great. Florida. Wow. It's like midges in Scotland, isn't it? Isn't it the same sort of thing? It's probably the same. Yeah, they're supposed Ooh. to be nasty. Really ruins your time. I oh. guess that's why they, you see these uh, in Florida, you'll see the pool area sometimes is, yeah, is screen um, screened. Yeah. Very well, Disney World has to have like a really high tech. They have like multiple layers of like pest protection. I, I'm is sure. Right? They do. They do. We were watching a documentary on oh. it, the different stuff that they have to incorporate in order, like fans and Ooh. botanicals and whatnot to, huh. to keep the pests at bay. Because we're not that tropical. I think it's a little more tropical well, it's down a big there swamp. than North Carolina. We're in the sand hills. So, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I wouldn't have even <laughs> considered any of this. This makes, my sister was telling me she went for a hike and a bunch of kids, she heard kids screaming and she gets down the path and they were being attacked by yellow jackets and the parents Ooh. were there. So there were, she's, you know, they were, she was helping the parents get them off the kids. And my sister pulls out of her pouch, uh, you know, the stuff you put on the, the wounds. And I thought, you carry that with you. <laughs> I would, it wouldn't even dawn to me. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be something. And she's in she's in Santa Cruz, so it's not even like. Yeah, I, I'm totally not an outdoors person, I guess, because it wouldn't. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even think to remember to wear a hat and sunscreen and, yeah. and take water with me. Anymore. <laughs> I, I'm going to yeah. die on on some excursion somewhere just because I, I've got my camera, I've got my backup battery, I've got a backup battery for my phone. <laughs> so 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 no totally prepared. No naked and afraid. Do you ever watch that? I could <laughs> never do that because of all the bug bites that people get. I'm like, oh, I'd be, I just itch sympathetically. I'm, I'm itching now. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Thinking of that. And here we use screens just to keep things from falling out of our house. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't that, think of bugs. It just does. I mean, I I love working in the garden. I'm fine with spiders and worms and stuff like that. But I, I none of that sunscreen even dawns on me. I'm totally I'm totally a wimp. <laughs> You're so much more knowledgeable than I am. Okay, Dar so, uh, Tam go ahead. Oh, Dar but I want to say, Mary, did you know um, Pat's going to be eighty? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. On Saturday they're having a party for him. Are you going, ladies? Yeah. I mean, we live across the street. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna be there? I will, Tamberly, I will bring that book to you. Oh, again. we're gonna oh, see Deirdre in person for the first time. Oh, I know, how awesome. Be I wanna hug. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I wanna hug. I'm fully vaccinated. And Deirdre, then you can figure out which house you lived in on, Wilson. I looked the other day. A couple of weeks ago, we went over to for dinner with and you Pat and Cindy, and those houses, they're run down. They were not yeah. like that when I lived there. I can't, and my husband, you know, because he dated me when I was living there, we could not tell. He was just, just thinking of how he was looking forward to seeing you. He wasn't paying attention to the house. <laughs> <laughs> you could go knock on all well, the doors and ask, hey. Just wanted to, can I see it? They have gotten run down over the last, you know, 20 years or so. I haven't really yeah. noticed. Right, because this was like 37 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing that if anything runs down in Salinas, be considering how much property costs here. It's crazy. Yes, why would they do that? Well, they're all rentals. The rentals. And there's no incentive for the uh, landlord to fix it up because it's they're the going to rent it us, in right? any case, no matter what kind of condition it's in. Yeah. Well, they just painted a whole bunch and they didn't, they just put roofs on some of them. No, they looked really bad to me. Huh. I don't really know. Okay, Tamberly, what's been new with you that's non-genealogy related? Uh, I had my oldest daughter out for two weeks, which was mom heaven. Um, and then got into all sorts of new craft projects, which I need like a hole in the head. Um, <laughs> And about five different knitting projects of things. Gee, it'd be nice if you could make me. So, and then uh, my childhood best friend came out from Boston for a few days. Oh, fun. And I went up to her mother's 90th birthday party. Where? Uh, Palo Alto. <laughs> you know, in the same house, we used to live across the street from each other. It's, it's that, it's so weird because. Wow. My family's never lived any place really long. And this is a house that, you know, you just walk in the front door because you've been going to it since you're 10 and wow. the sofa is where the sofa's always been. <laughs> is it the same sofa? The same it's always been. But she's, this woman's amazing. She, four years ago, she and her husband were out doing their morning walk and they got hit by a car and oh. thrown 35 feet onto their faces, onto the street. Oh, oh. Yeah, it was really bad. And just like around the corner from their house. And he ended up not making it. He had diabetes and some other yeah. underlying health conditions. And so they, they had to take him off machines. And she had a, um, a broken shoulder. The whole side of her face was broken up, all sorts of everything. And she's still out doing, she did a 5K charity walk for her 90th with her daughters. Wow. And still out walking every morning and- you know, Avoiding cars, I hope pulling aside the dining room chair, you know, kitchen chairs to go get something high in the cupboard. And that's an going to be Mary. Woman. She's a <laughs> Massachusetts Yankee. And those women are just, they're tough. Ooh. You don't mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of fun. That does sound so, good. And I've been chilling. There's so like what I've been doing is until yesterday. I drove up to Oregon, which is, I, I don't know what I was thinking. It was right after, I don't know if you guys heard about, well, Mary might've heard about the heat dome in Oregon and Northern California that was 110 or something in yeah. places that was a few weeks ago. So I was going to drive up to Oregon and pick up boxes of somebody's life that uh, a famous mu magician who died in 2007, everything's been in a storage locker. His name is Jerry Andrus. It's somebody I knew, but uh, a very good friend of mine holds the, her group holds the 
contents of this guy's life, all the papers, all the photos, all the videos, all the, all the inventions he made, everything. And he, um, they've got it in a storage locker and I've seen all the pictures and all the photos and I mean, photos and all the papers there for years. And I, well, I'm like, this has got to be scanned. This is ridiculous. They're sitting in a storage locker. So I kept saying, I'm going to go get them. And they finally said, you can come get them. Then the pandemic hit. And so um, after the pandemic, I said, I'm coming up there. And then that heat wave hit. And she says, don't come this week. So the week right after, right before July, July 5th, I drove up to Oregon. I did it in one day. It was 12 and a half hours or something. I don't know how you did it. I don't know how I did it either. Oh, you know what it was? I put a book on, I did it by myself. I put on the book on tape for uh, Andrew Weir's newest book. It's called the, the Hail Mary Project. And it was so freaking good. I just, so good. So I just drove and drove and drove and drove listening to this book on tape. Hey, Susan, how many times did you have to fill up? Twice. Oh, I filled up here in Salinas, got to, got to Oregon, filled up. You made it all the way to Oregon. I think I got to, you know, I stopped, you know, there's so many times I just wanted to stop just to stop because it's, yeah. it's hard on your body, but everywhere I stopped, it's like a hundred degrees and it's so miserable. You know, my cars, I have a new 2018 Prius. It's got nice air conditioning, but you got to stop to go to rest stops to go to the bathroom and yeah. you're just miserable. You get out of the car. Thankfully there's no bugs, but you get out of the car and you're just like, Ugh, you know, mm -hmm. so I filled up in Northern California, but I still had a little gas and then it was smoky. There was so much fire up there. There was, there was one point when I was going through Oregon that I couldn't really see it was smoke was so yeah. bad. And then, uh, I filled up in, I stayed in Oregon when I got there about eight o'clock at night, the whole next day, um, I hung out with a couple friends and we went and got all the stuff out of the storage locker and I filled up my car and went to dinner and then the next morning I got gas again and then came home and I can't remember I think I've had three tanks and that was it but that's impressive well it's, three, a, it's a, three tanks is amazing well yeah you think about it so it was about 90 dollars I think in, in gas she's reimbursing me they're paying for my hotel my food and my gas so it's about 700 dollars. I think she's yeah. going to write me a check for so but I would not recommend doing this in one go, yeah. especially in the heat. It was, it was, it, and I, and I came home in one day too. It was like 12 hours. It's just a lot. It's, but the book on tape was so good. I'm telling you, it was really, really good. <laughs> you know, if you like Did you finish it while oh, you were yeah, driving? the way back. I was trying not to listen to it while I was in the hotel room and stuff, because I was like, I gotta keep this for the road, but boy, was it really good. It, he, he's the guy who did the Martian. If you saw that or read the book oh it's the the movie is eh, is good but the book oh, gripping anyway so i filled up my car with all these boxes and since then that's been my life <laughs> tamberly if you want to come over and and um i've made a i've got a pile of about eight inches of photographs they're all organized this guy was a magician so he's always trying to take a promo picture yeah. And um, he, or here, let me just grab it really quick so I can show you guys. Um, but I need to sort it, but the history here is incredible. So I have this pile of photos. Look, I've sorted them all. They're all publicity photos that he took of himself. And they're from, and he had this floating head thing that he used to do. <laughs> Yeah, so, so and I've got him at all kinds of ages doing the same pose. It's it's it was like a publicity thing for him. So he was constantly doing this pose. So what I need to do is I've sorted it to all the publicity pictures, and now I've got to lay it on my pool table where I have a lot of space, and I have to sort these by. I mean, there's probably maybe a hundred pictures. Everything else is duplicates. So I got to lay it all out, figure out where all the duplicates are, and then and then sort it so that I can get the best image, like an eight by 10 size of each mm -hmm. one. So that when I scan it, I scan one image of it. And then the rest will just go in a duplicate box. And then, but there were photographers 
and him and his brother were photographers and they just would go they developed everything and look at the, all this oh my goodness is one effect they just kept taking pictures of it with different people some of them were famous and some of them were not but it's called the the i think i showed you guys this before the impossible box illusion and if you look at that close enough i don't know how well you guys can see that yeah it's impossible if you look at the way the wood is going over him it shouldn't be possible for him to be in that box i don't get it well look at his um it looks like he's in it yeah he's standing well there. he is in it but it's not possible for the way the wood is do you see how this back wood right here where my middle finger is yeah, yeah. look how it's passing over the top oh i got it it's that back corner that's so yeah, yeah this area right here it shouldn't be possible for the wood to be like that. oh yeah 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 you no, see I mean, Mary? concentrate on his body it's not his body it's yeah. that Corner. yeah so the so the illusion is is that you're not supposed to be able to be it's not supposed to exist that that the way the wood goes on top of each other but so anyway so this whole off. bag is mainly different pictures of that illusion so i need uh, to go through everything and get whittle it down to probably the best 15 or 20 shots of how it's constructed yeah different people who were in the picture different angles of it how revealing the illusion so that has to i have to spread those all out and i have to go through every single one of them yeah. and 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 do that and then the last thing well there's more but one of the other things let me show you really quick because this was so interesting and susan those headshots were just spread across all sorts of boxes what were those headshots just spread across all sorts of boxes or were yeah, they together? kind of yeah so i've sorted a lot he so i said they were photographers he was also a power man lineman that go the, the electricity and the power lines yeah. and the you know and there's a there's a military base for training they used in world war ii up in oregon and so they um photographed i guess he i don't know if he trained there but i've got tons of photographs of of the training that was done in the military base. And there's there's all kinds of stuff that I think they had, I think, I think like this is, um, you see the radio stuff out there and they're hiding out into the wilderness. And I think all this, and I have to go through this too to see what's going on with it. But I think that these things, once they're all cleaned up and, and you know, and done i think they're gonna i want to see if maybe we could get an exhibit or something at the um military base up there they don't have any army stamps on the back of them military photography stamps no he, he, they took them oh this is this is this is the guy who i'm working on him and his brother they were they were photographers and they went and they did a lot of photography of the area there's a lot of nature shot shots they do, were in a plane at one point and uh, so I think that what they did, and they're really well done. They're very beautiful. Look at this. You sure they're I not mean, beautiful for beauty. Oh. I think that they could do, there's a, there's a museum up there in Albany. Uh, I think there might be one for the base. And these are like Tamberley's pictures that we found of World Where War I. Mask going up a, a pole. Hmm? Just wearing a gas mask going up a pole is interesting. There's all kinds of photos like that. So I think that it might be interesting for a, for a, a historical museum, for a museum yeah. of some sort. So anyway, so I have to, I've spent most of my time sorting. <laughs> I spent I can't hours even... sorting, hours and hours and hours and hours sorting. I've probably put, I don't know, 40, 50 hours already just sorting things. And I've got it sorted and I've started scanning in the last few days. Well, you're moving ahead. It's taken over my office. You can come over and see my house whenever you come over on Saturday, Deirdre. You can come and see this collection. It's all, I, I, I've got it down to spots now, but it's not, <laughs> it's not it, it is it is intense. It, it sounds it's like my old life. Barbie shoes, Barbie clothes, Barbies, Duplos, <laughs> puzzle pieces, <laughs> group by like kind. 
<laughs> it's it's really interesting. I'll tell you guys a little bit about it when I get into the when we go to the other thing. So I guess Cindy's not going to join us right now. So let's do middle names and let's do genealogy. So my middle name starts with an M. It's Marie. Same here. Is this given middle name? On your birth certificate. <laughs> oh yes, uh, S. E. Mary's first. Elizabeth. What is this? What is your middle name? Eve. Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, Mary Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah. Pretty. Okay. So uh, I actually got contacted by my cousin again. I guess this like the windy woman. Yeah, the Carissa, Clarissa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she was sending me some more pictures. Um, actually, one that um, I recognized right away. It was a communion picture of my grandfather and his brother. Aww. And uh, that was cool to see. And then there was another one that she had um, used some sort of photo program to touch it up like the ones that you do, Susan, mm -hmm. um, to make them just more vibrant. Yeah. So, um, and I also got contacted by my cousin who lives out in California. Um, I forget where, I think she lives, cause she lives where Cindy came from. I think Stockton, uh -huh. yeah, Stockton. Yeah. yeah. Something like that, yeah. So she, um, cause I wrote to her a few months ago and I guess she finally saw her messages and hit me back up and cause we haven't seen each other in years. So, but she didn't have any more information on um, our grandmother where she came from. So uh, I just been, when I actually have been able to do any genealogy, I just been looking for the marriage records of my um, great grandparents. Which I still haven't found. That's what did she? What did Carissa have to say? I mean, she was just sending you photos. What What happened with the funeral? The Nothing. she hasn't said anything about that. And, You're not gonna uh, raise it, are you? Yeah. I'm gonna be going up there in two weeks, so I'm gonna I'm gonna you know be like, hey, I'm gonna be up there, but we're not gonna be up there really long. And my cousin is gonna be in there from Texas. Plus, there's a big. German like music festival going on that I want to go to. Whoa. Whoa. Love the music. So yeah, so um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit her in because it's only for a few days. So um, yeah, so that's really genealogically. That's my no new more. You know, it's really good news to hear that she's kind of dropped that drama thing that was looked like it was going to get to be problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I talked to my mom and she was like, you know what? Well, I'll talk to Terry, her sister. And she's like, you know, maybe we can do something and just, oh. you know. A simple tomb? Yeah. Simple, simple. Headstone, headstone. You know, or just pop it up there and tell Carissa to go up there. Hey, go up to the grave now. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. I would let her know. I'm not like that at all. You know. You can I tell us. Not. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I said, I just don't want to. I don't want to do it over text, over phone. I want to do it in person. Yeah. I'm that type of person. So, yeah. So, that's all my news. So, <laughs> who's next? I guess it's Deirdre, then me, and then Tamberly because she's got an S. Okay. So, um, this is something that I hadn't talked about before on my dad's side. You know, he's he's the one that really spends a lot of time on Ancestry.com. And so he had emailed, I don't know, some name came up. And now I don't even remember how, why he chose to email this person. Or maybe the person emailed him, I, I suppose it was probably it. And it's a retired police officer in Germany because my dad's parents are both from Germany and this is on his dad's side. And, um, but it was the pandemic. This has been several months. And the, you know, the gentleman said, I'm not, I did, well, the diocesan archives are closed, but he said, I've been to them many times, you know, I'm happy to go. I'll figure out the connection and, um, but I, you know, I won't be going until 
I'm double vaccinated. You know, my dad's like, okay, you know. Oh, I know what it, he, um, his mother, who's 97, I think, is the one. I know it's like, uh, tick tock, tick tock, right? <laughs> right now <laughs> is the one that there, there was a connection with my dad. But I think the son, you know, manages the account. So um, the, uh, so finally, Germany, you know, they were, I don't understand for a first world country, I would never have expected Germany to be, take so long to get those vaccinations going. But so he was able to go mm, last week or the week before. And so he, he kind of figured it out, but, and then he spent hours there, but he had a whole list of things he was looking at because I think he was sitting at home during the pandemic, just making lists of stuff to look up. And um, they're like fifth cousins, he and my dad. I mean, they're pretty, I mean, it's pretty far apart, but they both had a lot of fun doing it. So that was good. And, um, and did he find what your dad was looking for? Uh, my, my dad really wasn't even looking oh. for anything. They just figured out it was um, on my my dad's father's mother's side. You know, which when it goes on the mother's side, it's just so hard to follow. Yeah. But but they they had it all. I mean, you know, to the seventeen hundreds and wow. Anyway, my dad's all excited about that, but. Um, which is interesting to me. And he, this man is kind of my age. I mean, I'm 60, so he's maybe 64. So, and he speaks English, so, and writes English. So it's very easy to communicate. Yeah. And he has a fair amount of time because he's retired. So I think this, it'll be good. Like, should I ever be able to focus on that side? <laughs> and then, um, so, you know, my grand, my great grandmother from France that married the Swiss man then lived in Switzerland and remarried. So this um, second husband, it's just, you know, it's a small village. So years ago, I mean, it could have been 15 years ago somebody from that village and her husband came and visited King City. Well, they went to visit a relative in Bakersfield and he brought them to King City to visit relatives. Putsies, I don't know, those from Salinas, maybe, you know, the Putsies in King City. Anyway, mm -hmm. well, there was a I want to say a graduation party or a birthday party, something was going on where there were a lot of people and which was just dumb luck. And so my mother knows this. It's her relative, a distant relative in Bakersfield, but they, he was friends with the family and, you know, she's known him all her life. Anyway, he, he would go back and visit Switzerland pretty often. His wife has passed away. He never had kids, so he's pretty free to travel. So he knew them from this little village in Switzerland. And so they, because they, you know, I think it's a lot harder for people to come to America. For us to go to Europe, there's always somebody that can speak English, you know. Right. So it's pretty brave. I'm always impressed when they come over. So uh, but they came, you know, to him because he can speak Swiss Italian and English. So he brought them over to visit these relatives that are not our relatives in King City. And somehow, I guess my parents were at, maybe they weren't even, no, I think they were at the party. But somehow they all met and this woman, they, my mom and her kind of bonded. Well, it turns out that she, her grandfather was brothers, was the brother to this second husband. 
So oh. she's the one that's been able to give like a lot of history and the, you know, she said he was not a nice man. You know, my, yeah. my father would say, no, the uncle was not good, da, 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 whatever, you know, I mean, you have to take everything with a grain of salt, but just for funsies, I will share the screen and show photos. Anyway, I've just become Facebook friends with her because oh. in a Christmas card to my mom, now they communicate randomly, but always at Christmas. You know, here's my Facebook, here's my email, keep in touch, la la la. Did she well, speak English? Um, I don't know if she speaks English because when she talks to my mom, they speak Swiss Italian, but, um, but she did send a Christmas card and it was like translated, but the translation was not really very good, but um, I don't know if she hits trans, if she uses a translation service on Facebook, because my parents are not on Facebook. So I'm like, okay, I will become Facebook friends with her and, you know, do this. So she's, she's gotta be in her eighties, but kind of young eighties. And she is very active on Facebook. So um, I wanna show you some pictures that she put on Facebook. So this, maybe I had shown, I, I've got a, a much clearer picture. I don't know why wow. she put this on, but so in, this is my, my great grandmother. This is the that second is that Bonet? husband. Yes, this is Bonet. Wow. With the second husband and Look his father. And you'll note they're against a a stone house. And she had previously sent photos maybe 10, 12 years ago when she was after she returned home. So I've got a much better copy. I don't know why there's this one, because mine doesn't have the the breaking and it's much clearer, but nevertheless. So, um, so keep in mind that photo. And so, um, let's see, I just might have to move you, go to messages. So she sent um, the, from just a couple weeks ago, she was up at the house so here's the house. They were on this side is where that photo was taken. Oh, they were wow. sitting there. Look at that scenery. That was where oh, the my photo God. was taken? Wow. Yeah. So it's still in the family, um, you know, the second husband's family. Um, and look at that. Look at that. I know. Is it just, I just cried. Why would I mean, anybody want to move from something that beautiful? Look at that. Oopsie. Wait, that's... <laughs> I saw a nun at the top of that hill with her arms like this spinning. Around. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little closer up of it. Yeah. Like crazy. I know. I'm just like, oh, I know the last time I was there, the weather, it was pouring. It, you couldn't, you know, it's just so amazing when you see that blue sky. Um, but yeah, it, she's got some like look at this here's the the nun <laughs> picture the swiss <laughs> house wow oh. but it, it's a big price to pay for this beauty because in the winter it's very 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 cold yeah um, you become very remote quickly. that's when you go to somewhere else yeah <laughs> yeah wow. so i mean i have her you know, which is good. And, uh, and she has the daughter that's a little younger than me. So, you know, hopefully not that we're related, mind you, but. <laughs> but somebody in the family still lives in that house. I think they use it just like summer residence. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, like a DACA or I don't know yeah, what you yeah. call it. Yeah. But, yeah. Wow. That's not their main residence. No. Beautiful. The wonders of is Facebook. That, is that in Tocino? Uh huh. Wow. 
the Ticino, the Italian yeah, yeah. Swiss. So region. are you planning on going back, Deirdre? I remember we were teasing you about a year ago when <laughs> about France, but you know, I know it's still a ways away before it's safe to travel like that, but right. uh, I'm sure we will. Uh, now I'll just wait until my husband retires because um is he close to retirement yeah he's 64 well he'll be 64 September but um I mean it'll be a few years yet but I, I'm sure we'll go back because I still have other relatives that are there too but yeah. um but it's nice to have friends all over the world right even if they're not relatives <laughs> Well, well then you can come yeah. visit me in the little town that she was from in france when i buy that place right on the river right see yeah. I, I don't know it might be, it might be flooded by now damberly <laughs> i don't know if i want to be near a river anywhere in europe right now <laughs> that's uh, yeah, scary did you see all that rain they said they had a month's worth of rain in 24 hours or something yeah i can't even imagine that mary didn't you <laughs> live in germany when you were in yeah the, yeah i was in uh schweinfurt oh yeah schweinfurt didn't get whacked so bad though yeah no. china's bad too yeah but china's I huge just, see i saw a video of people in a subway going underwater oh i saw that last night that was china huh and you see the mass on and the water was up to him here and they're in a rail car yeah oh. do you see that other guy driving no, and he's like I, driving his car and like it's literally up above his head and he's just turning like uh, nuts. He's in the water trying to drive. Yeah, he's driving and the water was like up, like almost his whole car was submerged. I don't know who was taking the film, but I mean it was real. What how the hell he, are you doing driving through water? How could you do that? Because isn't that like you're gonna get carbon monoxide from the car? I mean, how would your car well, run? I mean, it takes a while for your car to kind of the air intake. And then you got like internally, like then you're going to start having shorts because outside the engine is fine. But inside, once it starts getting inside, then everything starts shorting. So, yep. you know, but it was like a 10 second clip of this guy just driving and, and the water is just like. No, oh, I have to see that. Let me see <laughs> if I can find it. What would it be? China? Yeah, a guy driving his car in China during the flood. It's recent because it was like, it was, on, I found it on Reddit. Uh, no, I like our location. I think we're pretty safe. Yeah, I don't got bugs or anything over here. Hurricanes. We had the fire behind us, so I'm good this year. Yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been really. I I when I drove up to Oregon, I'm telling you, I left here. It was like 65. I got up there in the hundreds and the smoke, and I went to Corvallis, which was really nice. It was probably like 75 or 80. It was it was nice once you got there, and then I came back to town, and it just makes you really appreciate how nice it is here. I mean, it was like 66, I think, in Salinas. I was looking, and, and <laughs> I and when I went to go to the storage locker where they had the, the boxes, the storage locker itself was protected, but the sun was coming right in on the door of where they, you know, she pulled it up and my rental, my car was right out in front. And we were trying to take the boxes and put them in the car. And I was dripping. I, I don't think I've experienced that long time, especially dripping when I'm not ex exerting myself. I was just like, water was just going, dip, sweat was just dripping off my body because of the way the sun was hitting right on my car and right on the, the entry of this thing. And she's inside puttering around and there's no air. It's still, I'm like, I'm going to pass out right here. This is going to be... <laughs> It was awful. It felt like it was 130 or something right on my car. My oldest brother moved to Salem a couple years ago and probably about three weeks ago, I sent him a, a photo because when it was 115 in Salem, it was 64 here. <laughs> well, not quite double. But. And Salem's supposed to be nice and calm and quiet and, oh my God. and wintry and, and misty. I don't, oh. see that. I don't see that video. Ah. I'm afraid to watch it. Maybe it's going to be nightmares. If you, if I put in China driving like flood, car, 
Um, it's why you never buy a used car after a flood. Oh, you don't I don't. I don't even know what to look up. I can't find the video. If you think of it and you see it, send it my way, Mary. I'd like to see. It. I think I'd like to see it. Okay, so let me let me tell you what's going on with me, and all of it is Jerry Andrus. It's nothing in my. I haven't been able to look at anything in my personal life, but it's fascinating. Oh my god! <laughs> so I sorted all this stuff. And I've, I've been trying to figure out how to do this best because, you know, I want it for the reason why I'm doing it is, is archiving it and getting it um, onto uh, scans and everything so that someday, so historians can go through it and learn more and whatever they want to do. So it's, it's, I'm trying to intuitively do this correctly and I'm trying to scan everything and it, um, it's nice not making choices because it's all done, but um, it made me think of what Tamberly said about the pioneer in, in Massachusetts, because one side of the family is from Massachusetts and man doing this genealogy is easy, mm -hmm. simple, the <laughs> prominent citizens in Massachusetts, yep. there's oh. all kinds of information about them. And then a group of them moved to Wyoming and they had a horse ranch wow. and then they moved to Oregon. And the reason, and see, I'm learning about this and it's, it's odd because like I said, I not only have this Jerry Andrus's paperwork, I have his mother's and some of his brothers. And and he kept wow. copy of everything he wrote. I'm back, I started in 1939 yesterday and he would write a letter to somebody by hand and then he'd copy it and keep a copy. Wow. And then in World War II, I, I just started on World War II stuff last night. Thankfully it's typed, but he used carbon uh -huh. pop, uh, carbon paper. So everything he typed, every letter he wrote home, we have a copy of. So it's like, oh, this is going to be really nice. What you know? kind of person does that? He's got OCD or something. He's really yeah. strange. An unmarried man who filled his house full of gadgets, so full that the walls bulged out. That's the kind of man who does this. <laughs> really, yeah. really odd guy. That's but, the kind of man who doesn't get married. Yeah, you know, that's the kind of guy who doesn't get married. Yeah, and and he was, and I'm reading the pit. I'm so, I'm trying not to read anything because it's, you'll get you'll fall down the well, you know. Yeah. But so I'm just kind of glancing over it. But he had he was really interesting. He's got he had a girlfriend. She ended up eventually marrying somebody else, but they stayed friends for years. And I'm reading some of these letters, and he's so funny and, and charming and not flirty or anything. Just just a fun guy. And he and I. I can picture him as, as this young man before World War II. He sent his mother on a trip to, they were living in Oregon, in, to LA. And she wrote, remember how I was telling you guys, I was complaining about my family letters and, and they're all, hi, how are you? <laughs> Weather's good. So-and-so came by to visit. Nothing new's happening with her either, right soon. And I'm reading these people's letters. And, you know, of course there's a little of that, but a lot of it is good stuff, really like um, his mother, Jerry's mother, her name is Lillian. She had, um, she was talking about the 1918 flu and how, oh. uh, how she had it. She thought she was going to die. And, and wow. you know, so there's, there's references to historical moments in time. Yeah. And then she, she, Jerry, I guess he's like about 22. He pays for his mother to go to LA from Oregon by train, a sleeper train. And um, she, her, her niece was there, her stepdaughter or something. And she wrote a 22 page letter to her family with the details of the story. And it was so interesting. She comes through California and she's talking about how beautiful the weather is. <laughs> and she goes over Salinas and she says, and there's this lady that's sitting across from me. And she just, she just won't shut up. She has to tell everybody everything. And she's talking about Salinas. You remember Salinas. That's where they had all that trouble with the lettuce. And uh, then, uh, this is 1937. Oh my and God. And she says, she said, um, we're passing over the Salinas River and there's no water in it. And they're like, I don't <laughs> know if I'd want to live in a river, a place where there's a river with no water. And that is too funny you know, check this out she's describing the 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 car the train car she's in and she says every car has a a, a porter a, a maid and a canary 
oh, that's not good. <laughs> Well, as long as the canary's alive. I guess that's true. I thought it was hilarious, but she's describing it. So she's down to LA. She gets bless down to, you. bless you, Mark. She's down to LA and she talks about all the orange trees, how they're full. Uh, she goes to Glendale and she goes, to, they take her to see all the stuff, horses. And and uh, she talks about Hollywood stars and, the, and they went to the graveyard where they have all those people buried. <laughs> and, she was, she was from a race. She had a ranch. She had a horse ranch. And so um, she loved talking about the horses. She, I don't know anything about horses, but she's talking about, she went to Kellogg's. Um, there was a ranch down in LA that had Arabian horses. There were. Oh, Ke Kellogg. That's the, um, that's the Cal Poly Pomona campus. Now, right? Yeah. The yeah time they donated Kellogg. the land for, and they still have the Arabian the Kellogg Arabian horse farm out there. And I found these photos sitting in an envelope and I thought, okay, it said some things written on the back in 1937. And now that I have her letter and I put two, two together, I can see she's describing the pictures. So now I understand what the pictures are. But so I'm getting a lot of historical content. She goes up to, uh, she takes, uh, comes back and she goes to um, Nevada, right, be right across the border of Cave City or not Cave City, uh, I don't know. She talks about being in the mountains. Very interesting. And, and the reason why she lost her farm in, in Wyoming, her cattle thing is they had a huge ice storm and it, when the, the, it killed all the things growing in the ground. So the horses and the cattle, they just had to let them go. They had to let them oh, go for themselves. Oh. And they said thousands, you know, not just hers, but thousands in Wyoming died because there was oh. no way of feeding them I and mean, you couldn't afford to feed them. And uh, the, the weather killed the, the things that they were eating. So it's just, you know, really sad oh. thinking about it, that all of these animals, these cows and horses had to die because there was no way of feeding them. This was in 1925, 1920. Well, then what was happening around that time, I guess, wasn't it the depression? Depression was 29. 29. Okay, so it was, it was, I think it was before the Great Depression. So even though it's not my family, I'm really enjoying learning about this family and I'm learning so much. And, and I, I thought about this the other day. I thought I am probably the expert on this family history because yeah, I, I built so. this, this family history uh, ancestry tree and I keep adding to it. Now I need to go back and look at the letters again and, and read them and, and understand better who people are because as I'm uploading the photos and I've got all the family photos I think uploaded, um, I have to try to decide who's who and and how they're related. And anyway, I'm putting this- And the brother, the brother didn't have kids either? Mm -mm. Oh. Whole, uh, but- one of the things I did with the ancestry, one of the reasons why I felt like I needed to do it is I thought somebody should own these family pictures. This shouldn't be owned by a, a science group in Oregon. I mean, I could see not the family stuff. Yeah. So I, it might be a good idea for me to kind of figure out who are the descendants that, and maybe they could be approached yeah. when, when I'm all done and um, see if they want their family photos because they're there and they, they have beautiful stuff. And I'm restoring them as best I can, but they're not really in bad shape because these people had some money, I think. But what oh, yeah. I, I want to show you a tip, and this is, um, I, I'm glad we're recording it because I think that Cindy might really find this really interesting to be, uh, let me make this bigger so I can find the share screen. I will use this. So I'm going to use this example. I was scanning it on these documents and you can look and see, wait. You can see how dark that is. Um, and of course, this is the old handwriting. You guys can see that, right? Yeah. So this is from, this letter was October 12th, 1934, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this is going to Lillian, which is um, Jerry Anderson's mom. But he was a professor in, I um, can't think of where he is. His, Yale University. Oh yeah, Yale. And Museum of Natural History. So he would send these things, and this is what he would do. And he'd draw the bug. And this wow. whole letter, this whole letter is about this bug. It is nothing personal in it at all. It's all about the bug and what he's doing with his research. Um, haven't just come in with a box of insects after giving a lecture to class and entomology in, you know, so um, 
here's the tip I want to show you guys. Sometimes this stuff is kind of hard to read when you're yeah, when you're like, the bug. Yeah, come here and you can see it. <laughs> it looks like just a regular beetle. Oh yeah. But he drew it out in great little detail with the little things on the sides and everything. So here's what I learned is you go to the image and I I, I've learned with photos, you want to use, there's all kinds of software out there and some software is good for this and some software is good for that. There's not a perfect software out there I've learned. So, um, and I don't use, um, I don't use Photoshop. So I'm using other stuff. So maybe this is all available in Photoshop. I'm not quite sure. I'm opening it with Picasa. And so this is another program. So I'm going to hit edit in Picasa. Move this over. Yeah, I don't, I, it's, Picasa doesn't exist anymore, but there's probably other programs like this, but I managed to download it because you can still get a download of it. So here's your picture, your, it's a JPEG, but here's your document, and maybe it's a little hard to read. In Picasa, there's all sorts of settings, and there's this one called Boost, oh. and if you click it, look what it does. It oh. makes it so it's readable, and you can adjust it a little bit, you know, making it darker light. Oh. You can get it to a point where it's a little bit easier to read. And I thought Cindy might find this interesting too. It also now, gave it a color that made it easier to see the contrast. Yeah, it's much easier yeah. to see. And if I go through these, oh, this is a, a, a diploma. No, high school Yeah. Uh, diploma. I don't know what it's going to oh. do. Let me try this. I see it's, it washes it out. I but, love it. No year. Oh, it's on the other page. Okay. It's on uh, the page right before it's on. 1934 but they all have this brown mark on it because it's been sitting in a box for so long but um it's a glue from the envelope <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that's exactly what it is so so that worked and i thought that was a nice little tip let me try it on one more that was good thanks Susan. because if you're having trouble reading especially i mean it's one thing if you have one letter but if you've got a lot of stuff to go through it's 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 a lot of content and this bat on your eyes and the other thing I'm doing is I'm trying to be very respectful of the photos and, and everything. And I don't have any liquids or food anywhere near them. I wash my hands and I've been putting everything in plastic bags. So in case just like I take it and I put it in the bag, that's how I'm sorting everything is with these giant gallon sized bags. Eventually they'll have to go into something else, but I, I want to make sure that they're protected. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how much you've done already. Oh, it's been weeks, uh, like two or three weeks. And like I said, you know, this is what I've been doing. Here's, here's. Susan has incredible focus. <laughs> I love this. Uh, I posted some pictures on Facebook and one of my friends who's known me forever. She goes, Susan's in her element. <laughs> so here's your letter that he wrote. And I'm going to go over to this thing and use the boost again and see what it does. Yeah. Please. Is it in pencil? Uh, yes, this is in pencil. So I can make it a little darker or lighter because I was finding that, you know, I've got to do a lot of reading. Yeah, this is pencil. And I kind of could tell there were, this is written in 1941. He's, in, he's got the, uh, the date as well as where he's at, where he wrote it. And it's, um, let me see. He also had a whole bunch of, he, here's a letter that he never sent. It says, never sent. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, he's got everything and it's, it's, it's amazing. And then I found a whole stack and he's in World War II. And let me find it real quick. But this is like so helpful to me because, you know, I'm sitting here with these letters from 1926, like with my magnifying glass. If I s put oh, them man. on the computer, I could enlarge them. Right. Duh. Oh, if you brighten gosh. them like this, yeah. Um, if you brighten them, then and brighten them because yes, they did pencil. See how, see how hard it is to even typed. True, the type. And he know. saved everything. Yeah. This is to oh, this is to the Camp photographic Robert. editors of Life magazine. He was sending pictures from World War II, and he had a photo that he wanted to have them use. He's like, if you want, you can use this on your cover. <laughs> like, oh, that would have been something else. I don't know if he ever got anything wow. in Life magazine, but he got a typewriter at some point in World War II. I think it was. He was in Paris, oh, and I did all these last uh, this morning when I figured this out. I thought, oh, this is great. But he was in Paris. He's talking about being in the war. Oh, oh and a lot gosh. of this is on, um, oh, he finally got a typewriter. He typed it on paperwork that's 
like um, tissue paper. I don't know if it was oh, they like had the thin. air mail paper, yeah, yep. very thin. It was very thin. So, very thin. so it makes it really hard to read it. There's poetry, there's, this is, this is. A oh my gosh, stop. So you, but you did not read all these. You no, said. I haven't. You guys are looking at them at the same time almost that I am. I can't read this because, I mean, I will. Because remember, you know, this, this book that I told you about, Mary wasn't there, that I read on the airplane back and forth to Florida, them passing to Tamberly to read. The Paris yeah. Seamstress. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the Paris Seamstress. So it's, you know, world, I mean, there's different time periods, but the basic thing is World War II and in Paris. And this would be so interesting to hear, you know, since he was right there when it's happening and, right. you know, they were starving and, you know, what the average citizen did to. Right. And this yep, is, well, it, it might be extremely interesting stories. I don't know. I haven't read them. I'm mm -hmm. not the person to write the story because I, I'm not. It'll happen. Well, I mean, they could even be put out just on their own. But look at this is one of the oldest photos I found. Check out these little girl's hair. What? They look like they have gloves on or something. What year is that? 1904. Well, then, look at the doll. <laughs> yeah, your daughter would like that. So, I mean, I've, I was able to do a lot of these things they're just shoved in envelopes and and here's a postcard from 1905 um, wow. to to uh and this is the homestead please accept the compliments of the season from some place in terrace so i'm trying so yeah it's not part of the magician life of this guy but it is part of the uh the history that i felt like it was important to have but there's there's so much and um Oh, check this photo out. Oops. Hold on. Can you Surely that? there is oh, the some dog. relative that would be like, whoa. Over the moon. It's a dog. See the dog? Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of impressive. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. And it's, I, I, um, Cindy and Tamberly and I sat down and we thought this out and they helped a lot because there was so much information to, um, I'm trying to do it right. Like this is that guy who was the uh, Yale professor and pff, that's the best picture they had there. These are some I took off the internet. And they what was like, his relation to this guy? And that's an interesting thing is I can't tell as easily because it doesn't, they're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tree. How do you say it's a, it's not a floating tree. How do I get rid of my, where, oh, here it is. Um, it's not a floating tree. Because remember, we talked about me not doing a floating tree for yeah. this project so I can easily share it. It's a separate tree. Yeah, you just so there's no it. there's no way of, at least I don't know how to do it, to make it so you can see the relationship to somebody like you would on your own DNA, your own ancestry. It would say how they relate to you. Well, because you, you don't have that. DNA. Well, not even like even if you didn't do dna it should be a way of making it so you can take the host person whoever the the main person is the yeah. family tree how they relate to people that i would like if you one of you knows the answer to that that would be helpful because um isn't it isn't it there automatically let me let me check no this. there's Everything. nothing on these it says um wow so the guy that with the bug his he is the nephews who's Lillian? Lillian is Lillian is the grandmother is is the mother of Jerry oh so and then so this is this is his cousin it would be a cousin yeah but I don't know which uh, oh second. yeah it, it's like a second and then I made a cheat sheet and I redid it from whenever I did this with um Cindy and Tamberly I had a little cheat sheet I started like a week after I'd started going through things and now I made it more detailed so I can so I can without having to go to ancestry I can kind of go okay this is so-and-so's you know I have a little family <laughs> drawn in cheat sheet but because I have multiple monitors oh my gosh I wouldn't even think of doing this project without multiple monitors I have ancestry over here I have um, something else over here I have the photo here I have you know different programs running because it, it's it's I don't know it's really one of those watch. cousins kids are gonna I, I stopped them on Facebook would enjoy it I stalked them on Facebook and I'm not so sure that a lot of them would be appreciative 
I, I don't know. I just looking at the Facebook posts, they don't seem like, I don't know. They didn't look like the type that would care. I, I, I don't know if it'd be true. I think there's some in Oregon that may appreciate it, but there's a bunch in Utah and uh, places like that they just look like they're very into themselves and I don't know so I don't know I have to see but I it's I don't think it should stay with us because it just seems silly but I, I've got tons and tons of this stuff to read and oh my yeah, God, I do. and I, I'm just working on the 1940s right now so he wrote letters to um, like a, he bought something you know I don't know if they wrote a check. Oh, I've got telegrams, wow. some telegrams. And anyway, so that's my tip of how to lighten the picture, brighten it up so that you can read the writing on it and make it easier. The other thing is, I don't think I have the heart to go through and transcribe all this stuff. I did one or two. It is, and I, I've done a bunch for my family. It's, it's time consuming and really hard on your body to sit there and just try to decipher what's what the handwriting is oh look who's coming it's really difficult and i think that i wonder if i'd hire could, somebody i think to do the transcription i wonder if trust. you could use voice recognition oh, software to read it and have that oh at least that'd be a start again hopefully i don't know how good that is yeah yeah, but maybe that's a good idea. Maybe by the time, but you know what? That might be better because it's it's so time consuming. Here, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hello. We've been recording it so that you can go back and you can listen if you want. Okay, that's great. Thank tell you. us what's new with you because I was just. Do you want to start or Cindy? Um, Tamberly was going to give us her update on her genealogy, but I don't know if she had anything. Did you, Tamberly? One little thing. Oh, uh, do it real quick, and then we'll go to Cindy. So I started going through. Now, you know, I, I've Oops. done lines with my four grandparents and started on the second one going through and trying to systematically record all the censuses I can find and record it into my spreadsheet so I don't have to look at the census again and then <laughs> can see where everyone was. So that is mind numbing. But on my, my father's side, my father's father's side, I had the emigrant great great grandfather that had the brother somewhere else in Ohio, you know, that were the Middleton Harrisons, but, you know, I, I've never found anybody I'm related to, don't have any information on how they got here from England, but knew he did come with a brother. And then with Cindy's help, I had searched through um, and found people that had trees that had the same last name with the relative from the same town in England and, and got hits on people that were from Middletown, which should have been it because they were the Middletown Harrisons and not the Columbus Harrisons. <laughs> and I kind of stopped looking at DNA hits just because, I mean, I'm not looking for long lost relatives. I'm just looking for info to dig. But I looked at it yesterday and for the first time on my through lines, I got a through line on my third great grandparents. So this would be the emigrants' parents back in England. Oh, I've never Ooh, gotten. Cool. And I've got How did that come up out of the three people on through lines with, that were DNA matches? And then when I go and look at one of them, dang, if his great great grandfather wasn't uh, William jo or John John David Harrison, who was the brother of William, my great great grandfather. So I found somebody. Oh, wow. Uh, a real person that's showing that we share DNA with this guy that's got the name that we figured that must be him in this town in Ohio, but didn't know for sure. But now I share DNA with this guy that links to him. So it's wow. like, oh, and, and he, this, that, the Middletown guy has the same name as my father. <gasps> Ooh. So he's a John David Harrison also. Why do you think it but, showed up just do you think somebody got added some kind of information or something that made it somebody got their dna done that it was when i, I go through it i always sort by the most recent ones so it was somebody that most recently had it and i was flipping through and i saw the common ancestor thing and then flipped over to through lines and all of a sudden there's a through line on a person i've never had a through line on and i looked up the guy and it's yep he's linking back through to the same 
it's like his his mother's father's father's was then the brother of my father's father's father so well, like, oh. he already had an extensive tree yeah he did because that family had a bunch of kids so my sense is there's a bunch of them my great great grandfather had two kids the one that was institutionalized the other that was my grandfather or great grandfather from which my brother and i are the only descendants from all of their children and all of their I, grandchildren mm. and but this guy had a bunch of kids he had like eight mm. or nine kids and they all had kids so they were prolific where mine were like nothing <laughs> happened like mine. So, so what, how did he, this guy relate? Pardon me? Great how did this guy relate? He was the brother. Great grandfather, of the brother of the great grandfather. My great grandfather's great, great grandfather's brother. Okay. So we, we would share great, great, great grandparents. Wow. So we, we share the people in England where two of their kids came to the U.S. And both lived in Ohio and best I can tell probably had nothing to do with each other. Because my great grandfather was and his sister were orphaned young, and they didn't go live with the uncle in Middleton. They huh. were wards. So they Remember, we were trying to figure out what happened with that. Yeah. We still haven't figured out why this girl was living by her apparently living by herself at the age of sixteen. And yeah, she, I haven't figured out where she was during that period of time when he was off in college, and she was somebody had to be taking care of her. Yeah, you don't think it could possibly be those relatives i don't know Could how be. close were they in in distance to each other yeah. do you think oh, middle to it's like well you know ohio's this big right so it's like halfway up the state but so no. it's not like across town oh no, no 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 but it's also not across the u.s either so but yeah that was the first time that i've had a direct link that's a dna hit to somebody on that side of the family because that's kind of the lost side. Well, do you think you're going to reach out to any of them? To ask? No, I'm going to snoop through all of their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> find them on Facebook At least first. not right away. Find, okay. how I roll, you know? find, find them on Facebook, make sure that they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, just on the odd yeah. chance that they might know something, you know, about It could be, and one of them lives like in New Zealand, so I don't know what that's all you about. You definitely yeah. want to go in and <laughs> New Zealand's incredibly beautiful. So that's just, oh, I just got to go visit. They've got all these photos. Yeah, but I might reach out just to see if they if they have any story. Yes, that's what and I I'll mean. check with my dad again to see if, you know, he decides to bring up some other morsel that he's sure he's told me before. Never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I love those stories. Oh, yeah, I knew that all along. You know, Deirdre, when you come over to Cindy's house on Saturday, if there's any papers you want to um, scan real quick, I could, we can walk across yeah. and scan them. Okay, I mean, I have, well, I have scanners all over, but if you, <laughs> you want to just- Her house is what, 20, 200 feet away? Yeah, so <laughs> we can scan them so that they're up and you could, I don't know, for whatever reason, because I don't know if you have a scanner. I do, I do. Okay, well, then you can do your scanning. Then. Yeah. So get on <laughs> Mary, I'm sorry you can't come join us. Are you going to come on the Zoom link? Okay, yeah, I'll try to. What um, what time is it again at? 11.30 um, California time. Wait. Oh, 2.30 your time. 2.30 my time. Wait. Yeah. Is we'll the party different than, is the Zoom party different? Than? Yeah, the Zoom party oh, okay. from 11.30 to 12.30. Okay, Free I was going to say, my invite didn't say 11.30. <laughs> no, no. No, that's, it's a pre, I just sent it out to the people from a distance. Yeah. From that, that, that was a good idea. That's a really good idea. To, to the Stanford, mostly to the Stanford's that, and Cyberts that are afar, but there's about four or five other people that are friends. That so the party starts at one? At one. Yeah. So, and, um, and since we're on the topic, we're already using Tamerly's freezer for ice. But we could use some refrigerator space if either Tamberly oh, or yeah, I've got I can make refrigerator space. Okay, we we've got we're trying to make this as simple as possible so pick up food, you know, yeah. and, absolutely, yeah, and uh, drop it off. So we're gonna pick it up. 
when are we picking up tomorrow? I don't know. Mary and I sat down and made a list. I think it's tomorrow. Maybe it's today. No, it's tomorrow. Today's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I think it's tomorrow, this pickup day. Maybe it's, I don't know. I'm so tired. <laughs> well, I just know. over this, Cindy. It. It's just, it's a, it's a fun party. We're all going to be looking forward to getting yeah. together. Nobody yeah. cares if even food showed up. That's right. right. Well, true. But it's not, nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's nobody knows what you're going out is, and see each no other. Yeah. I'm going to, and Deirdre says she's going to give us a hug. I haven't met <laughs> yeah. that person before. There, that's true. You haven't. Huh? So that's, yeah. that's what I'm looking forward to is just hanging out and talking to people. Yeah. I, if I want something to drink and then it needs to be cold. The, there there will be a variety <laughs> of things to drink. And um, I, it occurred to me one of the things I can't do. And of course, there's Mary, and there's you guys, and there's my three sister-in-laws. But one of the things I can't do is carry food in and out, and, you know. Yeah. And uh, so keeping plates filled and people can they have delivered. legs, they can get it themselves. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. we can so help you. Tell us what to do. Yeah. So it, it'll it'll all work out. Mary says I should just sit around and direct. You should <laughs> sit around and enjoy. Yeah. Nobody wants exactly. to see you stressed out. You right. nobody wants to see that. So yeah. you need to sit down and and enjoy the party and the people and the fussing yeah. And yeah. on you and Pat. Not no. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear. Absolutely right. I'm going to take a nap. That was the now. friend version of yes, dear. Uh, <laughs> don't make me come over there and 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 lock you in your room or something in my room it's really hard for me to let go but yes i i know i need to i do yes. know intellectually that i, I okay know. well you've just been told so then mary's been harassing me about it too so. <laughs> listen to your daughter <laughs> yeah. listen to your friends we made a list let it go Please. let it go just Please. play Please. that Please. song Please. let it go let it go what we have to do today tomorrow there's something Saturday. i put together a party cindy and it was just I made it up as I went along and, it, and I put on three parties and they all came off successfully. And yes, I was scrambling to find a table and more chairs at the last minute. I went and assembled a table in my garage that I had found the legs. I had to go up in the rafters and get the legs. And then I'm oh. trying to put them on and nobody cared. Everybody just laughed and they're like, oh, here, let me help you. you know, so we put the table together with the legs on it in time just so that we, because there were so many people at the last party I had, I had 22 people in the back oh, okay. so how many people are you expecting 32 at this moment well but we have a big backyard you have a big backyard you don't yeah. have yeah you have plenty yeah. of room to me it's yeah. like radish roses every year at thanksgiving my mom would make radish roses where you cut along the outside and you put them yeah. in ice water so they bloom she would uh -huh. always forget them in the refrigerator after Thanksgiving was cleaned up, she'd put it, she'd go, oh, my radish roses. And she would be so upset. She goes, what's Thanksgiving without radish roses? I, oh, I've never <laughs> heard of that before. I have never had Thanksgiving with radish roses. Radish <laughs> roses were always left and forgotten in the refrigerator. Is that she a video? So upset because I did Thanksgiving without radish roses. And I'm thinking, I've never seen them on the table. What is, is that a, thing that are in the where, you, where do you get that from? Huh? Where is that from? I've never heard of that. I don't know. She was from the Midwest. You just take them and you. Oh, they're like. Um, you cut into them so it's sort of like an artichoke from the outside, all the yeah. way around, and then when you put them in ice water, they flare out into little. Oh, I yeah. see this. I'm looking yeah. at. A, I'm looking at them. On, I looked them up on YouTube. <laughs> but she was just so con convinced that Thanksgiving was ru ruined because she didn't have the radish roses out. And everyone's going. We have never seen radish roses at Thanksgiving. <laughs> They're in the refrigerator, but they've never been out on the table ever. And, no. and Thanksgiving always went by successfully. Exactly. And, and they are really beautiful. I'm looking at them now, but then of course I'm looking at the best. Yeah. Because because the refrigerator appreciated them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I hadn't either also expected to be having this crisis with the, the vision thing. This yeah, what's the update today, there? So that kind of messed me up but um so it's better today you so just I, I the guess doctor it, right now right pardon me you just saw yeah i doctor. just got home from the doctor so yesterday morning i went 
to the doctor and I wasn't seeing anything out of the eye except for a light, you know, a little bit of light. And um, he's going, you can't see anything. <laughs> Crap. What are you saying I'm lying? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, when I saw you the day after surgery, that's what it was. And when I saw you two days after the surgery, that's what it was. And you didn't seem too concerned. So <laughs> anyway, so what it is, is that um, there's a lot of blood and blood um, debris in the eye and it's blocking the exit for fluids. So not only can, is it totally blocked, but the pressure for glaucoma was up to 62. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> like it should be under 19. Under 20. Yeah, it should be oh. under 20. So more normal would be 14, 16, 18, maybe. They kind of worry a little when it's over 20. You know, with me, with my history, they kind of go, well, you know, um, 62 is like way bad. I didn't so get that high. They, um, so. Cindy always does things, you know, well. Pardon me? She yeah. always <laughs> does things well. So at she one point, her. I saw three specialists yesterday. So they, they had me in, first of all, to see the retina guy, which I saw last week when I was, or two weeks ago when I was in, to make sure that in this, at the surgery time, there had been so much tugging and pulling that the Dr. Page was concerned that he had maybe detached the retina. So he had me have um, a ultrasound with the retina guy and everything was okay. But this time, because everything was still a mess, they did that again and everything was still okay. No detached retina. And then, but because the pressure was so high, he pulled in the glaucoma guy. So at one time there was two doctors in the same room and I swear to God, they were talking hieroglyphics to each other. <laughs> <laughs> they may well I had, have been. I know, I know what they were saying. But I trusted that they did. <laughs> yeah. you didn't need anyway, so they um, gave me a medication that um, helps clear fluid. And, but it contains sulfa. And I had an allergic reaction to sulfa when I was a child. A fairly mild reaction, but none, nonetheless. But we decided under the circumstances, it was probably worth the risk. And I was fine. I, I took oh, it. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I'm great. yeah, I took it there and I didn't have any reaction. And I've had it now three times and I've been okay. So, and it, and it worked, started working right away in, oh, in the good. office. So, and today it's fine. Um, there's another drop they want me to take that'll thin the okay? uh, in there, but I can't get it. I'm struggling. The pharmacy doesn't have it and won't maybe get it until Friday, but another pharmacy has it. But somehow the two pharmacies are having trouble communicating. So finally, what the doctors did today uh -huh. is gave me a different drop. That's a once a week drop. They gave me right then and there. And I'm canceling you know, the other pharmacy order. We'll deal with it next week. So things are better today. The pressure is way down. Um, Good. I'm going to see what Dr. Page next week, the glaucoma doctor, Dr. Richardson the week after that. Everybody's happier, feeling better. I still can't see anything, but, you know, it's reasonable that I, you know, why I can't see anything and try to get rid of the blood and then they'll be able to see better in there. Hmm. In the meantime, I've still got my 20 AD vision in, you know, my handy magnifier and I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, you look tired. I am tired. I am tired. So um, that's, you know, I didn't need all this extra drama in the middle of this week on top of everything else going on. But so are they saying that, um, so they're saying everything's normal? Well, it's to be expected. Yeah. Now, well, no, I mean, they, 
it, I, I think it's okay. Let's put it that way. They, they, they think it's going to be okay. It's just going to take a really long time, like months, probably before the blood goes away so they can really see in there, see what's going on. But this is the beginning of the, so every day after today, it's going to be maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, on they the said path six, to get better now. Six months to a year recovery on this. So this has been how long since the surgery? Three. Two and a half weeks, almost three, three weeks on tomorrow is the surgery time. So I just wasn't expecting total blackness. And I don't think he was either. I, I night before, yet uh, Tuesday night before the appointment, I thought, you know, I'm going to study this. So I studied it. And they were talking about blurred vision and, you know, not this total blackness. So I think it's just my eyes are spin through so much that they just reacted with lots yeah. of blood, Very and, likely. you know, and all that. So, so hopefully it will go away. Is that common that childhood sulfa allergies, you outgrow them? You know what, Tamley, I don't know. I mean, I've never you tested a lot of allergies, yeah. don't you? Yeah, Sam had a, a sulfa allergy. And Did she? Always, always treated her as if she still has it. We've never tested it. Yeah. You know. Well, I had a, um, what was it? An eye, an eye drop. No, I had an eye drop here in the last year or so that was a sulfa family drop. And the pharmacist was concerned, but we decided it was okay because I only had a mild thing yeah. when I was eight, you know, like a, a rash. Yeah. And, yeah it's the same. and I was okay with that, but it was only sulfa family. And there was another drug I took that had sulfa. Um, I didn't have a rash, but I got really agitated. Uh -huh. But honestly, I can't say that it wasn't because I was anxious about taking it. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's so separated at that point. Yeah. yeah. But this time it was clear that the benefits were going to be worth the risk and they knew the, to watch for it and if it yeah yeah, yeah. it wasn't like a yeah a surprise he had awesome. a penicillin problem when he was little where he was very little where he broke out and hides like from the that's penicillin. me yeah yeah so we don't you know he's never had a reason to have penicillin since so yeah don't know if no, i had got it or not it's not like die from penicillin but it was like a, a reaction so Mm -hmm. I was even a moxicillin whenever he was young, whenever he had any kind of problem when growing up. But yeah, I've I've been told that a lot of people who have them when they're little will have their stuff. It could be, and it's know, not like he's going to go, "Hey, let's go try some penicillin and see if I'm yeah. so allergic to it." Hey, no, but if like you a had a yeah. super bad infection, it might be worth the risk. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so I was quite willing to do this believe me so because i knew 62 was way high way high yeah everything else aside i'd lose my vision from that from glaucoma pressure because what glaucoma yeah. is is it puts pressure on your optic nerve and kills the octave nerve yeah my dad had that surgery where they put a stint in his eyeball essentially yeah, yeah. He's, they talked about that after the settles yeah. down. They'll probably have to do that. because. And I said, you mean 50 years worth of drops is catching up with me? And he said, just getting older. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. So, oh. all right, um, we're not going to go over what we did already because we taped it so that Cindy can listen but to I it. But I have two genealogy things to share. How in the world do you have time to have done that? Well, because oh, you gotta tell Mary the thing. That's right. That okay, was okay. That's right. Uh, poor Mary's waiting, waiting, waiting. I told Mary at the beginning that you were gonna tell her something. I do, and then I had one. I just flew around with the DNA matches. And I didn't think she would have anything because you're. I did. This was before. Okay. So, so Mary, floor yeah. yours. This is so. There's my great grandmother, great great, just a man, grandfather. My great grandmother, Mary Schwager, S C H W A G E R, that I could not get anywhere much with because the only real document I had was her marriage certificate. Mary, and it was spelled S 
H E G E R, something not not S C H W. And she um, was in two censuses and her two children's censuses. And between her censuses and theirs, she was born, I, I've talked about this, Austria, Hungary, Prussia, Vienna, you know, just all mix max. Um, I can't find a death certificate for her, although, and I looked this up, but theoretically it should be there. And I even went through the whole list of Rugies because she's Mary Schweiger married a Rugie. But I thought about it later and I thought, you know, I found Rugies under the letter B, a fancy R. Oh, to, yeah. You know, become a B. So I, I do need to go through the Bs and C. But um, anyway, because, but recently there was a DNA match that came up. And throughout, time here with the DNAs, there's been a few swaggers that have come up. Like, oh yeah, well maybe, but nobody had a Mary. And there was one Mary, but it wasn't really quite right. And, you know, but this one came up that had the potential to be a brother of the Mary. So wow. I studied on him more. And this person had lots of information, including their immigration. Ah, uh, whoa! Like and, yeah, and I, and I never could find my Mary's immigration, and in their immigration, there was a sister Mary who was approximately the right age, and came at a good time, and everything's like, whoa, really? So it's still not proof, but what's really fun? Let's see if I can get this without actually bringing it up, is that I had a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of research about the guy, including his birthplace and his father's birthplace. And he was, make sure I can get this. Hold on. I mean, I would have had this all ready to go, but of course, I was at the doctor's. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that. There. There's that. I think this is. No grooming on camera. Hmm? Well, I'm saying, I'm telling my cat, he's not allowed to groom. On okay. Camera. So this, the guy that's her potential brother is Herman Arminius Schweiger. And he is <laughs> born, is he just a minute? Yes, he is born in um, I can't pronounce these. I'm sure I'll mess it up. Biden bomb Eisenstadt dash Umberg, comma Bergenland, Austria. Wow. Bergenland. In Bergenland. And I went, oh, that's Barry's place. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. And then baptized in Seiskit, Sopran, Hungary. Um, a sister was born in Sislik Possum Pazani Begar, Hungary. Another one. Um, let's see. Then they went to Wisconsin. Um, somebody else was born in the same place as he, I think. Yeah, another sister was born in the same place as he. Um, but yeah, then they went to Otagami, Wisconsin. Yeah, but I don't have the, the means or the ability right now to pursue it, but I went, oh, 
I know that. That's Mary. We're practically relatives, Mary. <laughs> I mean, it's a big place, I guess. Huh? Heck yeah. Well, what okay. you learn about that area and what Mary learns about that area might help you. Yeah. Too. So what are the names of the place names that your people are from? Uh, my grandmother is. I don't know what happened. From Gussing. Which my one? Was, my grandmother was from Gussing. Okay. Along. Yeah, there's different regions. Mm. And then I forget my grandfather was, he was from Ray Robin. So there's regions within Booter. In Bergen Lawn, yeah. Okay. So I don't know which regions these yeah, are. I guess, I guess there would be villages because apparently the one that my grandmother came from was, it was like very poor farmers. During mm -hmm. the time when she was growing up, there was a famine. Um, and then, and Ray Robin, where my grandfather was from, he was a little more well-to-do. So there were a lot of different class differences too in the different villages, I guess, depending on what they did for a living, yeah. I guess. Okay, so it's not that big a deal, but I thought it was really cool that- Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like I, I didn't know heard of Bergeland was... until Mary and now- uh, Exactly. And Mary, I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> So if there's regions, I guess I have to learn about regions. But Mary, you didn't, the whatever province little districts that she named off of that census were for. Was, it was Einstadt. What was the, say that again? Um, oh, I just closed it up. Burger. Sorry. Burger. It's okay. Thank you. Was looking at the but you have a map mary that or you can see those different little districts right yeah and on the 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 family search the the line, uh, web page um, yeah family search was it the burgerland the, the actual yeah. the web page which is like open to anybody you don't have to be a member mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. a bunch. yeah because okay. burgerland didn't like wasn't there until after my grandparents left, actually. Oh. They're from that region that's now called Bergen Lawn because they didn't come about until 1920. Because oh. it was just the anniversary, the 100 year anniversary in 2020. Right. So before then, yeah, there were still little villages. Crazy. And so this is Beinstein Bond. Eisenstadt dash um right? is one. Isn't Eisen iron in German? I don't know. I E I S E N means iron, I think. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. I and don't then have another one was hungry. What yeah, year was, was the census, Mayor? I mean, Cindy? What? What year is the census that you're looking this at? This is this isn't a census. Um, this is like um, baptismal records. Uh, or... Yeah, you know the summary uh, somebody did of, and he got it from it, it's somebody's description. So the uh, birth record came from I don't know where. I honestly didn't study it too much, but yeah. his baptism record so the records must be here somewhere i just wonder what year since it's bergelon then it had to be since 1920 hmm. well 1842 is the bat is the birth and the baptism is let's see but he might have added the bergenland after the fact true uh, yeah Well, fun. Yeah. Anyway, so the other thing, which I don't know what to make up quite yet, because I just discovered I play around, look under, you know, unviewed um, 
DNA matches. And there's one on my brother's, one of my brothers that came up with a Phelps, which, you know, my Bessie Blanche Phelps. And it's a, um, a what was his name? Anyway, he, um, this Phelps person is not on my other brother or myself. And um, yeah, so that makes it cool. Ooh. And it's, you know, possible. It doesn't seem to match any place else. But there's enough information like where births occurred that I could maybe do a search on the birthplace and see if I could find any of the other names. Um, you know, it's a place to start researching, but, and it could be that my brother matches this guy who coincidentally has the name Phelps that has nothing to do with, wow. you know, he matches him on something else and not Phelps. So, but that was kind of a fun discovery. Right. So those are, I can do those things pretty easily because I know where all the buttons are. You know? <laughs> and, um, and I can do it for 10 minutes and then I can stop yeah. and, and come back to it. So um, next week after the party's over and Mary's going to go home, um, then I can get my office back and I can spread out and uh, maybe I can get back to the writing 20 minutes at a time or something. <laughs> We should um, pick a date that works for everybody if we want to do the dating clothing and hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Um, and it would be either of the, any of the first three weeks in August. Mary, this is okay. my, my oldest daughter, the costume professor. Yeah. She would be happy to do a, a Zoom to look at photographs and try to help decipher when they're from based on clothing and hair. Etc. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what people's schedules, but either any of the, the three first Thursdays in August, she is free. She just I needs can't to do it on the 19th. Click, pick a different day, please. The first, first, the first two Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 5th and the 12th. At the moment, I don't have anything. Let me double check, but I think I'm okay. The fifth, I'll be in PA. So, all right, the twelfth. Will you be back, Mary? Yeah, I'll be here. We have a winner. The twelfth. Okay. No, it's yeah, it's a Thursday. I will tell her the twelfth. So you want us to have um, uh, some can, old photos and stuff? Yeah, that we you haven't can been send able me to... anything in advance that I can send her. That'd be great. But yeah, she's happy to look at at old photos and, um, you know, help go through the reasoning yeah. on how you, yes. you start yes. trying to hone down when they were taken based on, on clothing and hair. Yeah. And like, I don't know said, if I have any photos. <laughs> so what, I'm sorry, I missed, cause I was looking at my calendar. I'm good in any of those three. So did we decide the 12th? Yeah, the 12th. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you just want to email me stuff, then I will send it on through to her. And like she says, the older ones are usually easier. The trickier ones that mess people up are the 20s and 30s, she said. That most people have a blur between the 20s. There, there's mm -hmm. a distinction between the styles in the 20s and 30s. And does it matter if they're pictures from foreign countries? I mean, yeah. No, but oh, she, would like, she would love to know where they're from. If you have okay. a state or a country or something like that, okay. that that also changes things. Okay. Yeah. But she could also talk to us just in general too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. and what she looks for, what her considerations are. Yeah. You yeah. know, socioeconomic uh, status, all that kind of stuff. You know, this will be really helpful. Plays into it. I've got. So. so we should send it to you sooner rather than later. Yeah. She said Thank a couple you. days before is fine. So, oh, okay. Yeah, she's her. probably. And Mary, I have that one shot that Pat's grandparents are in. Sorry? Uh, not Mary, I'm sorry, Cindy. I have the shot that you sent that. Um, right, of, of all the young people. 
Yeah. I, you, it's in the report I said, Barry Seibert, the one um, where um, McCluskey, um, Patrick Joseph McCluskey and, and Darty have just gotten married. I, it may even be one of their marriage party things. It's probably, what page? I don't know. <laughs> Towards the end. And there's a series of about 10 of them all dressed up fancy. Oh, me. Anyway, so it's probably the late 1800s, 1898, something like that. Well, but I'm anyway. Gonna rummaging, I'm going to be rummaging and stealing photos from my mother's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So do you so need any espion espionage that. stuff? Or, you know, do we need to send you like. I don't have to do that because everything, my family came. My, my sisters and my brother, they cleared my mother's uh, mother's house because my mom lives in my grandmother's house. So it was all like centrally located. So I told my mom, I'm like, I'm coming up for it. So like, yeah. <laughs> you announced your intent. Yep. She I had a right. moment to Oh my gosh, I can't wait, Mary. That would be great. Yeah. I know where all the hiding spots are in my uh, grandmother's house, so. <laughs> No, so when no, are you she going? Wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. No, she's like, she's really open to giving me some stuff. It's just been, I, it's hard for me to hang on to stuff, especially when I was in the military. Yeah. All my stuff from my childhood was lost. Because <gasps> we had a flood oh. in our basement. So all my stuff, all, oh. my food, all my high school stuff. So it's like, I don't want anything because I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, I don't have a lot of heirlooms and pictures and whatnot. So this is going to be, I'm coming to get a lot of stuff that I, I'm really, you know, help me with my research, but at the same time, you know, I want them. And how long has family lived in that house? Oh, they, they it was built. They had it built. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're the only, it's yeah. only family. That's an old Cape Cod. Yeah. Oh. So do you so. think that she inherited other people's, like with the Jerry Andis thing where I'm seeing stuff that other people <laughs> died and then they got the stuff. And so you may I don't know. Well, when I remember when I had showed her that picture that Clarissa sent me, my mom was like, how did she get those pictures? Uh, well, she a little ticked. She's well, like, people get you? pictures. They, they sent them out that I'm seeing all kinds of stuff where they, had them duplicated and yeah. so but yeah they went, to, yeah they went to photo studios even into that oldest picture i showed you guys was 1905 it was at a photo studio in massachusetts or i think or kansas i think it's massachusetts so so i'm sure they had duplicates made and went out to family members even snapshots got duplicated somehow it might have even been more important when yeah. you think about it because you know they had no social media or anything like that so it was so she probably has duplicates i just wish yeah, i had a, yeah i just wish i had a, a a relative that i could call or go and visit on my dad's side because everybody else they're gone you they're will dead. be the expert mary yeah so so when are you going when are you leaving and two we well the fourth we're leaving on a wednesday Wednesday, the 4th Early of August. Wednesday, yeah, the 4th of August. And when will you be back? Yeah, back like Monday, Sunday, Monday. It's oh, that's really going to be gone like four or five. Or yeah, four or five days. Yeah, because our son was going to go, but he's got to work. So that kind of works out because he's going to have babies at the dogs. Well, send us a text or an email or something and tell us how it's going. You yeah. Know. No, and definitely if I have some pictures, some early pictures that I can put up, definitely I'll. Uh, It'll be fun. Yeah. yeah put you up, know, I'd like, I'd like to look at that. <laughs> so it's not, it's going to be a nice little homecoming. Yeah. Are, is your husband retired? Yeah, he's retired. Oh. Okay. We don't have to, we don't, we don't have to worry about <laughs> any of that. Yep. Just having dogs, making sure somebody's got. To take care he's of. retired he's retired yeah. military he's a youngster still he's how old is he 50 55 60 sean sean yeah he's 51 51 oh, 
See, they're all youngsters. So way to do it. So what do you guys want to do for the next? Um, are we going to meet again on a weekly basis? Because I know the summer is becoming a point where we're well, you all seem to be busy doing things. <laughs> I, I am still here in my house sorting and scanning <laughs> and I for months until I think I, I think in October. I think we need to meet on a weekly basis, accepting the fact that sometimes not everybody will be here. Um, because if we try to go like, well, who's going to be here this, then then, then, then pretty soon. Oh, yeah, I agree. You it's know, fine. And I don't mind recording if people want to listen to them later. It, it, just keeping on top of what everybody's doing. Do you yeah. want to um, do something more formal? Um, or do you want to just kind of do what we did today, which is where we were talking about what we were doing, where we're going through? Um, because I know what I'll be doing for months. I don't know if you guys are feel like you're going to be working on projects or anything. How do you want to how do you want to do this? We've got the the lecture with um, Tamberley's daughter, Mackenzie. But right, we've got that one. Michaela. But that, sorry. Michaela, but that's not for but three weeks. Do we have anything else? Do we want to do another Caspian answers questions thing? Do we have, I mean, I don't even know if we have enough questions anybody has yet. Um, I haven't encountered anything really on the Jerry Andrews project that would need him yeah. to, to answer for me. So maybe that'll be something in a few months. Do we want to do research into something? I know I don't have time to go into any depth of anything, but I love learning if somebody else yeah. it. So yeah, I don't think we should. I um I can poke around on my own research maybe a little. The one thing I could do is assign you all a library task, not a killer task, <laughs> but something relevant to your research. I think we avoid, I don't think we do libraries as much as we could. They're online libraries. There, I think there's so many things there. There's like the national libraries, but there's the little libraries. There's the Scranton Public Library. There's the Cleveland Public Library. There's, in Deirdre's case, the Salinas Public Library or the Monterey County Public Libraries. Um, you know, Ohio libraries. The I could assign some of those for you guys to um say what's there and maybe do some little key research for known things you know i'd if, like to do that to but i want to do up in albany where the sky is from i'm because i would like to talk to um the military base well it's now gone but i think there's a museum up there and stuff i wouldn't mind going through and looking for what the historical places would be for the for this Albany Oregon and seeing what is there and if wait what are you saying Albany Albany Oregon it's a city it's a city in Oregon that's near sort of near um Eugene that's where yeah. I went to pick up all the it, stuff this it, is it, where the sky was oh no it, okay it, so I'd like to look at the historical like the museum there and if there's a military museum nearby because i've got military pictures they took of the base you'll see when you go back and look at this yeah video. i will okay. it, but i'd like to know more about that area hmm? if it's okay commissioned army base dollars to donuts there's a historical society or a vets group especially if they did world yeah. training there society. a vets group that is somehow involved with preserving stuff okay. and so that's what i should look at and, yeah. and look at through albany two more things susan there's or the county the There's the university or college that's there. Mm -hmm. They might have things. And the state of Oregon has in, in Portland, there's a big historical library or museum or something. I, I can't remember the details, but may have something too. Susan, do you know what happened to like, what, what, uh, what happened to the land the bank base was on? Did it become part it's, of all it's homes? Or? And she drove me through there and she said it was multiple, I, I'm gonna say it wrong. Uh, Mary will help me. The platoons, platoons or whatever, there was multiple. Battalions. 
they they had multiple ones that trained at this area and then they eventually uh the land went back to the cities i guess and like fort or did yeah so what, that's where were, that's where if you could find out who um who got the land, like when Fort Orange got divided between Seaside and the Feds and Marina, then those different cities often have historical stuff that's attached to um, the county or the cities have historical stuff that's attached to what went on in their parcel of that base. Yeah. Okay. Because the so group out of Fort Orange, I know, is really strong. I'll, I'll look into that because it's part of stuff I need to do anyway, and yeah. I'll use it as an excuse to, as an assignment, but I, I mean, the home, the Jerry Andrus home is a historical building. Landmark. It's got its, it's got its, uh, uh, yeah, preserved, okay. preserved stuff right. there. So, so it's, they manage, that's. It's on the registry. Yeah. So hopefully there may be some more information about stuff in that area. I don't know. I don't really know what to find. Like Cindy said, we haven't spent that much time on this and there may be something we really do need to figure out what to do with this stuff when i'm done with it mm -hmm. uh, a historical society in the area a museum i don't know but there's there's a whole storage locker of stuff yeah. that yeah. still i'm not touching it but it's got to go somewhere and maybe maybe the city of albany would have something i think they approached the city of albany and talked to the museum at one point and they said well if you'll build a wing uh, <laughs> yeah. add it on to the historic or the museum or the something but i don't know maybe usually when you give stuff to a museum or something they're looking for some sort of endowment to support yeah. the maintenance of it yeah that makes sense yeah. you know so i thought of a i thought of a way you could jury rig um that might work to jury rig that family tree. Oh yeah, how? So it'll list the relationships. If oh. you were to, if you were to post yourself as a sister to Jerry and his brother, Ooh. and then link yourself as a main person, right? As a central person, as a sister, then any of those things you clip up should show the relationship to you, which would be the same as the relationship to Jerry. So, so Cindy, what we're talking about is that I made a family tree, a separate mm. family tree. It's not a floating tree mm. for Jerry Andrus and his family. And what I was saying is that it is a little awkward because I can't tell, you know, an ancestry tells you your second cousin first removed or your right. grandfather or third, you know, it tells you something because Jerry Andrus, uh, so nobody's related to anybody at a glance. So do you think well Tamberly has an idea that i could be listed as there but do you think yeah. there's a way of doing it so i can make jerry andrus the main person so that everybody that is looked at will relate to jerry andrus you know do you know what i mean but it's only going to list the relationship based on who i think on how they're related to jerry who the owner is because like i looked i have access to a friend's tree and I mean, I could figure out the relationships by looking at the trees and everything, right. but it doesn't list it at all. It only lists it on the ones where I'm a member of that tree. So if you were to make yourself a member of that tree, and the best yeah. thing would be to make yourself similarly situated to him as a sibling. How about like as a, maybe I could have my brother or something. So it's always male. I, I don't, it doesn't matter because your relationship to Oh, Other people's true. relationship to you isn't affected by your gender. Oh, that's true, huh? Right. Maybe I'll play around with it because but I think it would be helpful whenever you're talking, you'd be like his great great grandmother, his yeah. great great grandmother's sister or something. Right. So it because I I'm now I have to go through the tree and go one generation, two generation, three generation, over one, yeah, down. Yeah. Now. I have an idea changing slightly the topic to Mary Cyber. Yeah. So if you're going to your home area, um, you're gonna be with us next week, but then the week after that, you're there. Yeah. So between now and next week, if, do you think it would be a useful 
would it be a use, a good use of your time to really research the local libraries that would be around there or the state? Let's see, where's, where's the places around there? That's Allentown? Um, Copley. Uh, Northampton, Whitehall. It's what? Whitehall, Copley, Northampton. Yeah, what's the actual town that house is in? Uh, I'm sorry? What's the actual town the house is in? Um, my mother's house or, or, or? Your mother's living. Oh, um, Center Valley. So I guess that would be the first step is to see, you know, what libraries and historical societies are, you know, there locally, maybe it's regional, maybe there's the such and such genealogy society that, you know, our seaside genealogy society um, or his family history center, maybe there's a family history center like ours, it's got wonderful set of books and maybe there's things or, the local library that's got a whole thing about the house or the relatives. I don't know what, but maybe that could be useful to you to spend a couple hours or an hour researching what kind of libraries, um, historical societies, uh, genealogy societies are in that area. Are you flying? No, no, we're driving. We're driving. There might be Let's see, are you going to Harrisburg? No. No. Um, I, you know, I don't know what, I know that's where the state um, library is or something. I don't know, Jana always yes. talks about the wonderful place to go there. But I guess, you know, what I'm saying is, is, is if you had some places, even if you, knew that there was three books you wanted to look at at this library or three microfilms that had newspapers from such and such, you know, not obituary collection, but newspapers that talked about your great whatevers. I, I don't know. That's the whole point. You'd have to look. Yeah, just to see what's there. Yeah. And see online what kind of interest or even call them. And, and don't forget you guys, I have, I have, I, newspapers.com and I just got access to newspaperarchive.com which is okay a different, uh, is that is, how's that different so we have different different uh, newspapers in it I haven't I haven't <laughs> spent a lot of time in it because I usually find everything I want in newspapers.com but I have a it's separate like, one now newspapers archives might be more like the little local newspaper that has that you know nice. so and so visited so and so but because my, my family uh, in Arkansas their newspaper is not on newspapers.com. Yeah. It's a little you know town but it was in the archive one. I haven't looked. I started oh. on the Jerry Andrus project. So <laughs> <laughs> but I and I just got the archive maybe a week and a half ago. Her oh. life is rather consumed. Yeah and I also have fold three too that came as well. Wow. Okay. And so, I got all these free things. Yay. No time to so look at them, but I've got them. If you guys have any need of them, let me know and I'll look it up. So if if you were interested in that, if you thought that would be helpful, that's something you could tell us about next week. And Susan could begin to tell us about hers. And um, it, Deirdre, I would think, have, have you even looked to see what's at, at the Salinas Public Library? There's a whole bunch of photos in the Salinas Library. They have there? an archive. Okay. No, I have. You know, like it's the circle photos. And... Dirty probably, maybe her, their farm and, and all that might be yeah. in somewhere. Or you could add to it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think that if we have the stuff, if you look it up and find out what's out there and you have family photos maybe we should be donating them i mean that's the photo but you know the 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 right the scan i wonder what the ag the county ag department has too yeah there you go and then there's the monterey county historical society i joined that i don't know what they're doing yeah. oh, i joined it too yeah oh. they do I, I have no idea what they're doing if they they sent me a newsletter did you get one i think i did but i don't think there was anything in it was there 
I haven't even looked at it. It came when All I All right, Tam, really, what would you like to pursue? She wants to she wants to dye her 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 my wool. Yarn. Yeah. Your dye your wool. <laughs> my reclaimed wool. She needs to stop picking up these projects. Oh my god. Start and start on the other stuff. So you could look at the libraries, um, you know, Ohio, the various places. I'd, I'd like that. <laughs> Maybe I'll or, look at the mystery. I'll look at the libraries in Middletown. Where the oh, yeah, go. she's great, great uncle and see if there's any genealogy yeah. stuff on him there and see if I can get. OK. And it might be regional library, too. And yeah, the, there's. Um, uh, because she had a hit. Yeah, and there's, oh, Ohio's got just tons of stuff. And don't forget, there's Cindy's list that you can look up libraries by, you know, localities. Okay, and I don't know that I'll do anything. <laughs> you just need to just direct us. You don't have to do anything. I'll just, just sit there and direct. around. <laughs> be a thought, just think about where what we need to be doing next. Yeah, but this is a good idea because I need to know more about this area. I know so little. I'll think about maybe I'll find something to study on, but I know I can't do much of anything until probably at least Monday or Tuesday. So. Oh yeah, so now I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for Albany, Oregon, and there's uh, a museum and other points of interest. I know yeah. that's a nice place. There's an Albany Regional Museum and a uh, Monolith Historic District, Hackleman Historic District. They came to the area in the 1920s, so it's not like they're an old established family there, but because um, who he was, maybe, I, I just don't know. But the little local museums usually have stuff that the big museums don't want to touch. That yep. could be really interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's the local museums. So, okay. I'll think of something for me to contribute. So, we'll just do this over a period of days because I don't, well. Yeah, I mean, we'll do the first one. Well, I think Mary should go first because she's she got that. Yeah. yeah. And, and needs it for the next one. And we can do it on the also on the fifth and then on the 12th. We've got Michaela and just keep going until we got things. I think it's a good idea. Yep. Okay, so I will put this up on YouTube and I will email you the link to the video. Now that I have a new computer with a new processors yeah. and a new video card, things are fast. Oh my gosh, I would, to upload a video of this link, would take me like three, four hours before now. Really? I could probably do it like in, within an hour. So it's wow. oh, <laughs> just what a difference getting a new computer and processors and all and that. Did you get everything organized and back and laid out the way you wanted? Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. Everything's cool. and Caspian came yeah. over and put that RAM in and and uh, then the, put the video card in. I didn't even know if I really needed the video card, but he's just like, nope, you got it. It's all ready for whenever right. the. <laughs> this should last me a few years and it's it's lightning fast compared to what i had before nice i tell you what you guys if you <laughs> getting a new computer is so nice but it is a pain in the ass for weeks because not everything is on the computer probably that i would want but in a way it's like maybe i don't even need it right Read you up a little it's like your phone when you get a brand new phone and then you have to sit there oh i gotta right. download that app i gotta download that app i gotta download it Ugh. Cool. All right. I have to go. All yeah. right. Take care, okay. everybody. Cindy, get some rest. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, Talk everybody. Later. Bye. Next week. Bye. I'll see you on, I'll see some of you on Saturday. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>